Hey everyone, welcome to church. Here's your church news. Baptism Sunday is January 28th. Dive into this next step of obedience following our Sunday series 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. We can't exist without each other. Relationships are what life is made of. Come and learn what God intended for us during our February Relationship Sunday series. Motion Kids is launching a brand new team. If you're creative, crafty, organized, or great at brainstorming epic ideas, then the Motion Kids Decor team is for you. Join today and help make kids' ministry events like VBS Summer Camp as awe-inspiring as possible. Marriage Night is for you. For me? For me? For you. Whether you're married, dating, single, invest in your marriage with an evening with pastors John and Helen Burns. For all details or more information on these events, or to register, visit the Church Center app or wearemotionchurch.ca. You can follow along on social media at our Motion Church Facebook page or at We Are Motion Church on Instagram. Good morning, Motion Church. Just sending greetings from Guatemala. I'm here with the Motion College student team. And uh, this morning we are pouring a concrete floor for a family that's in the sponsorship program. And there's David waving behind me. That's Rocky and Karen's grandson. Uh, working with Rocky and Karen and Compelling Love Ministries here in Guatemala. They're doing such a great work here. Uh, this afternoon we'll be uh, running a soccer camp for kids, a three-day soccer camp. I know you'll be seeing this on Sunday morning. We're following along 21 days of prayer still with you. Please keep us in your prayers for the next few days as we finish the work uh, that we've set out to do here uh, in Guatemala. And next Sunday, I'm excited to be home. We'll be uh, anointing everybody with oil and speaking a blessing over you and your families and your business next Sunday. So I'm excited for that. Uh, we love you. We love being your pastor. Thanks again for praying for us. We'll see you soon. Amen. Awesome. Well, church, we have the privilege of hearing our founding pastor, Pastor Andrew, come and preach this morning. He and Pastor Evelyn, they do such a great job. They are filled with wisdom and so much love and legacy, and we honor them this morning. So would you please stand and honor Pastor Andrew as he comes to bring the word. I should have, should have started a little earlier and then I would have got here on time. Things change. I'll tell you, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to get used to this age because inside you don't feel that. So it's like a V8 motor in a Model A chassis. So I got to keep that chassis going. So great to be home. I said to my wife, I wish I can be home just for at least a while. So we're home for the next three weeks. And then we're going to Africa. And uh, that's going to be really, really, really awesome. Tremendous. 300 pastors, I believe, are coming. 50, we're ordaining 50 pastors. So that's going to be a journey. And uh, we're bringing some pastors from Abbotsford with us. Joe and Lynn are coming with us. And so we got a dynamic team. I want my wife to come and share a little bit about a miracle in this house to encourage you. And today, <clears throat> I just, we're talking about the anointing, anointing of God. Anointing of God is here. If you know Jesus, and he's come into your life by the Holy Spirit, you are anointed. You are anointed. And we'll talk about that. We just want to talk about that. Because Pastor Johnny, last Sunday, we weren't here, but we listened uh, to, what do you call it now? Not a CD, not a cassette online. My wife takes care of that. I still run a ballpoint pen. <clears throat> I think that was an epitome message. And in case you weren't able to be here and you missed it, just talking about it, I feel such an unction of the Holy Spirit. 
I'm not interested this morning of sermonizing or we'll do our best, but I'm just interested to encourage you <clears throat> that there's a major shift that Pastor Johnny prophetically preached about, and that's the shift towards the supernatural. <clears throat> this church has always believed in the supernatural, and we've seen some very dynamic, dynamic, we're talking very dynamic miracles in the beginning of this house and through the time. But how many know it's not enough? If there's only one sick person in the church, that's still not enough. We need the supernatural. Hallelujah. How many sense the presence of God right now? Sometimes we perform so much we want to perform, and we think it's based on our performance, but it's based on Jesus' mercy and grace and on his presence. And by the time we're hopefully done with our inspirational message today, every one of you will feel and know you are anointed. The biggest lie that Satan wants you to believe that you're not, that you're not, you're, you're, you're not there yet. None of us are there yet, but guess who's there yet? The Holy Spirit is there yet, amen? The Holy Spirit is there. You might say, you know, I need prayer, and I, yes, we'll pray, we'll pray for people, next Sunday we'll be anointing people for the blessing of the Lord in their lives. We believe in prayer, we believe in altar calls, we believe in laying on of hands, we believe in all of that. But you are anointed to do it also. And we'll talk about that. So I want to share, I want my wife to share about a miracle in this house that happened because certain young adults uh, understood their anointing and understood their responsibility and acted on it, and today the one that got the miracle is sitting in the congregation. So dear, do you want to go in front here or wherever and uh, just share? Just relax this morning. This is not Amen. a professional time. Amen. This is Holy Ghost time. Praise God. <laughs> I just want to share a testimony. I was talking with uh, Tyson this week, and we were reminiscing some of the miracles that happened in the house here a number of years ago. And um, we had a couple come and speak on healing. And then they had workshops. And they said, OK, let's do it. So the young people got all excited, all charged up. And they said, our grandma needs a miracle. And so they called grandma, said grandma had a terminal illness. and. Uh, they said, Grandma, we want to bring you tonight to the service. And she said, I, I don't think I can make it. And they said, we'll carry you. We'll carry you in. So Tyson and Daniel and the relatives all joined around. They brought Elaine up to the front here. They circled her. I'll never forget it. And they started praying. And God touched Elaine. And here she is today. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. She's a miracle. She's Glory a miracle. to God. Worship God. Just praise him. Amen. Let loose. Amen. Young people, I just, that first song that we sang, you said it, I believe it. If you can say that, you can have miracles happening in your lives. I want to encourage you because between this whole season right now is a miracle season. So if you, you claim the promise, you said it, I believe it, I'm going to do it. And I just want to encourage you in that area. Elaine serves today, volunteers at the church, a dynamic part of the church, and wonderful to have her family here. And we just thank God for these miracles, and we want to highlight them to encourage your faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. For those that you know are newer to the church, and a whole lot of you are newer to the church, or I'm newer to you, I don't know 80% of the people here, you know, founding pastor doesn't know 80% of the people. 
And that is a wonderful sign. That is a good sign that God is bringing you into this house. I want to refer back to Pastor Johnny because I don't want it just to pass by like a complimentary comment. I want you to hear the voice of the Lord that God spoke through him. And, okay, I know that's not what I'm going to, well, I am, whatever, I'm going to preach on that. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter three, uh, 11, and that's just off the cuff right now, like I usually do anyway, what's new. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, I want you to know how a new day in the Lord happens in your life and in the church's life. God comes and speaks a word. There's no new day that ever happened in the Bible, new era, new time, new phase of what God is doing until a word was spoken prophetically, uh, not only by prophets, but in this day, you have the spirit of prophecy in you because you have the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? You don't have to say, well, I need a prophecy. Yeah, hey, a prophecy may come. I've never sought for a prophecy. I've never sought to be prophesied over. But I seem to be the target everywhere I go. It's probably my size. In evangelists, in crusades or conferences, big conferences with 10,000 people come and see us sitting there and come walk all the way from the platform and bless us with a prophetic word. But I've never sought a prophetic word because I have the prophetic spirit in me. And the prophetic word confirms, confirms what God is doing in your heart. I want to just give you assurance this morning. That's, that's what I feel, that you're not, just, you're not just recipients sitting there, you know, weak and feeble and disjointed from God. The Holy Ghost is in you. The anointing of God is in you. You might say, I don't feel it. You don't have to feel a thing. Okay, let me read the scripture before I go on preaching. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. You know what the word worlds there is? Ages. Ages. An age was framed. An age was introduced. An age, a move of God was introduced by the word of the Lord. Always, all things by the word. A move of God, a new era, a new time in your life does not just happen. The word of the Lord will come to you. And you can, you can prophesy that word. You, say, you don't have to say yay, 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 or King James language. You know, the yay and the these and the thous are only in the English language in King James. In the other languages, there's no such thing. But somehow when we prophesy, we have to use thou and thee because it makes it so authentic. But you can just speak the word. You can look into the mirror and you can say, by the power of God in me, by the anointing of God in me, I'm going to have a new day in my life. This is not going to continue the way it is. I'm going to prophesy this out and prophesy the glory in. Come on. Prophesy the devil out, prophesy the sickness out, prophesy the disease out, and boy, have I had a chance to do that. I mean, my hip has gone crazy, and we went to the Philippines and Thailand and airports, and you know, talk about humility. The man of God's in a wheelchair, and they're wheeling me from, from gate to gate, and this one man, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. You know, it was carpet in, uh, where was it, in uh, Singapore, I think? Carpet, and he's pushing and pushing me, and I'm going, why did he give me such a little small old man to push me? He, he has no idea what he's pushing. I have a lot of anointing oil. <laughs> I weigh a lot in God. Three times he had to stop and sit down because he couldn't go any farther. And I'm going, oh my God, I'm going to have to lay hands on him, pray for a heart attack. So it's, it's, you know, 
I've never been in this situation. And then all of a sudden this crazy, I don't know if you've had this sinus devil that hit and you're coughing until your rib cage hurts. And then we go to Edmonton. And that's the condition I went in. Somebody said, why don't you just cancel and stay home? I told the devil, I'll, I'll squeak, I'll whisper, I'll crawl on all fours, I'll do whatever I have to do. I'm anointed, I'm appointed, and I'm going to go through it. I was praying for this service. I said, God, give my voice back. God, let me, let me do it. I said, Guy, guys, bring a chair. I'll look like some of the senior pastors. We're, we're going to do it. Come on, church, you're going to do it. Inconvenient, humbling, difficult, challenging. You think the devil likes the anointing? No, he doesn't like the anointing. But we barrel through. Can you say amen to that? Let me finish reading. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Again, worlds there are eras in time. And I'm so... Um, um, uh, blessed and I don't know how to put it, so moved by the presence of God or what God is doing in this house. I'm excited to be alive. I'm excited to see this era and this age in our house. And I watch the young people. You are destined for a dynamic era in God. God wants to use you supernaturally. There are people all around us, in hospitals, everywhere, that are sick and cancers, cancers destroying them. This ought not to be. How many believe that? We cannot accept this. We cannot adapt to it and then finally adopt it. Did you know that that's how it works? You first adapt to that negative stuff. Adapt, 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 until you finally adopt it. Now you tolerate it. I want to stir you up. We are not tolerating sickness and disease. We're not making excuses for it. And we're not blaming people for being sick. Are you hearing me? This is why I hear all the time. Well, you drank too much Diet Coke. Or you did this. Or you did that. Jesus healed the sick and never said that you did this, that, or another too much. That's why you're sick. How many know he just healed them? Are you hearing me? He just healed them. He came and healed them. They want to drink Coke? Once they're healed, you can drink Coke. You can do it. You can, the body is fixed to, to handle all this as long as it's healthy. But we made excuses and we made, we, we do stuff to try and do alternatives. Jesus is the healer. And when Johnny preached, my wife and I sat there. I had my hands up in the air. I was weeping in the presence of God because I saw something that maybe others didn't see. There's a massive shift in this house. There's a prophetic shift in your life. This house is you. This house isn't something whatever mysterious. It's you. How many want to shift in your life in the prophetic? How many want to see your prayers answered? I'm tired of not seeing prayers answered. I'm being honest. Somebody said, you know, well, just keep on praying. I said, well, I will pray more when God answers more. I'm not some religious freak. I want the prayers answered. There's no problem on God's side. There's something here on my side that is not manifesting like it ought to. So I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to yield to God. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to see the manifestation of the anointing. So I want you to know that we are embarking on a different day. Like, I, this is not even my notes, so it's for free. I want you to know to embark on that day, nobody earns the anointing. You can't earn the anointing. It's too, too pricey. No one can earn it. All we can do is yield to God, obey God, humble ourselves before God. Don't wait for God to humble you. That's very difficult. Humble yourselves before God. Yield to God. Do whatever you have to do. Do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do so that the Holy Spirit can flow through your life. Amen? 
All right, so now I'm going to go to a page here that I have. That's why I like the other microphone on the ear, but I requested this one in case I cough. I didn't want to, you know, blow your eardrums out. You can't really cover that one. All right, let's talk about Christianity. Let's talk about what God is doing in the world. I see prophetically that there's going to be a massive explosion of the anointing of God in the earth. I see, I see, I'm not going to tell you how I see, but I see by the Spirit that God has been digging a lot of oil wells, which means anointing, and capping them. How many understand that? And capping them for a time and a season. God has been pouring oil into you, into all of us. You say, how come I don't see it? Hang in there. Hang in there. The anointing knows what to do. The anointing is not just some energy or some force. The anointing is the very person of Jesus Christ, the very person of the Holy Spirit. And we are in a season where we see so much negative, and I don't want to be talking about it. If you want to see it, just turn to the news, and it's all there. Horrific stuff, wars, corruption, not just in foreign countries, dressed up corruption in our own country, interference, um, efforts to turn this Christian country into something that God never intended it to be, right? We understand all that. We see all that. And God is waiting to pull the trigger. He's setting up his people. I'm speaking prophetically now. So if you don't see tremendous dynamic happening in your life, don't worry about it. The anointing is there. Tell your friend, I'm anointed. I want a little louder. Really mean it. I am anointed. I feel like running through the city. That's what I see, running. That's a miracle. And screaming and yelling because I finally realize I am anointed. I'm not waiting for the anointing. I don't have to do anything more for the anoint to be anointed because when Christ, the anointed one, how many know that the word Christ, the name Christ means the anointed one? How many have Christ in their life? Let's see your hands. I know that, but I just, I just want you to do something. So you have the anointed one with the anointing living in you. I'm going to confess right now. I don't even, I can't even imagine how big that is. I can't even imagine that Christ in me, the hope of glory, Christ who was God manifest in the flesh by his spirit. It's all mysterious. You want to figure it out? You'll fail when you figure it out. It's not that God keeps it a secret. It's that if he told us, we couldn't comprehend it. You can't tell a two-year-old how an engine works. You go, well, why can't you tell me? Because you wouldn't have a clue. You couldn't comprehend it. But you have Christ in you. We, we brush by this so fast. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Praise God, hallelujah, let's clap our hands. It's way more major. God in you. God is in you. You don't have to be a reverend. You don't have to be the founding pastor. You have the same Christ. Wow. The same anointing. The same power to do signs and wonders and miracles. The ministry is here to tell you what you can do. The ministry is not here to do it all. That's the disaster of 
what we call church sometimes, that it's only specific people, you know, that are behind the pulpit that can pray for the sick. You can pray for the sick. As your neighbor's sick, pray for your neighbor. Take a risk. You see, nothing is going to happen if you don't do it. But something could happen when you do it. How many know that? And you don't have to have goosebumps. You know, you don't have to have charismatic goosebumps. Oh, I feel something, you know. That's all right. Feel whatever you have to feel. Let me tell you, you don't have to feel a thing because you move in the truth, not by feeling, not by sense. So let's go back to here. In this house, we've been digging wells for a long time. Lori, right? Elaine, Fennell family, Lynn, Sister Lynn, remember? We've been digging wells a long time. The cry of my heart is that when people come to this house, that they enjoy everything there's to enjoy, but that they can sense and feel the anointing. That they can come into the lobby of this house and even on the property of this house, which we dedicated to the Lord. When we came into this place and dedicated 1975, we dedicated the house of God to the Lord that healings will occur. I'm going to tell you right now, how do we know that healings aren't occurring right now by the anointing of God? How do we know that? We're not that smart. We don't have to feel it. You don't know what God's doing out there. You don't know what God's arranging for your finances right now. We don't know until it happens, until it manifests. But before it manifests, God's been working on it for a long time. And then all of a sudden it manifests. Guess what God did yesterday? Yes, it manifested yesterday or today. But God was already working. Because the Holy Spirit moves all the time. Genesis chapter 1. And the Spirit of God moved over the chaos. Right? How many know he has not quit moving? Wow. Wow. Just listen to this. This is a school on the anointing. The Holy Spirit is never dormant. He's active all the time. He's moving all the time. He's like a living frequency, moving all the time. The key is that this human vessel within which he lives, has to simply learn how to yield to that moving. But you can't make the Holy Spirit move. Old time prayers were, God, could you move in this service? Could you just see God say, nah, I don't feel like it. What do you mean, could you move in this service? God is saying, Andrew, could you move in this service? Could you move and get in line with the Holy Spirit? And for you that are conservative, you say, well, this is for the charismatics. No, it isn't. It's for you. It's for you. You may be quiet and conservative. Everybody wants to, hey, come on, clap hands and jump around like some. I love it to see young people. My goodness. It's a blessing to me because I can't do it right now because I'd be flat on my face. Everyone, you're excited about God. Be excited about God. But just because you're conservative doesn't mean you're not excited and doesn't mean you're not anointed. You don't have to fall into a certain category. God, if you only know what sense of anointing is, you don't have to fall into a certain category. You don't have to come up to some kind of level and then God is going to use you. You know... I don't mean anybody's a donkey here, but when the prophet of God didn't hear God, the donkey talked to him. If God can use a donkey, God can use me. Don't tell the neighbor that. That'd be offensive. The anointing. So what I see prophetically is God 
all over the world, in communist countries and everywhere, unbeknownst to the leadership, they think they're in control. I had a vision of this. I had a vision of this. I had a vision of God drilling wells all over the world. And then I saw those wells connected with, with, with wire. But in that vision I saw was, was packing those uh, wells or holes with dynamite. And then God, uh, there was, what do you call that? Plunger pushed a plunger, and, and all of this didn't explode openly. Listen carefully. But it exploded like underground and made the earth, the globe, like sugar. And then I saw the hand of God going like this and restructuring the earth and re relandscaping the earth. When you have that kind of an explosion in your life, you'll see the hand of God restructuring your life restructuring things in your life. And, uh, oh boy, I forgot to watch my time. I got six minutes, 32, 31, 30. <laughs> I commanded in Jesus' name to stop. <laughs> Church, I'm gonna tell you right now, we're in, I, I wanna live to 120 because I wanna be part of the, the, the move of God, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God is, see, God outpoured the Holy Spirit to the earth in the day of Pentecost. Now God's outpouring the Holy Spirit to the earth. He, he outpoured the Holy Spirit from heaven to the 120. How many know that? And then from the 120, he wants to outpour the Holy Spirit to all the earth. How many know you're part of it? You're part of it. You're part of it. And, and let me just, I'm just going by the Holy Spirit. Some of the struggles that some of us have had, and I don't know one person that hasn't had a struggle, hasn't been attacked, it's one way or another, and that starts right here. I mean, I stood in Thailand and looked out the hotel window and said, how am I going to do the next day of ministry full day of ministry, I can't sleep, I can't this, I can't that. I know what it is to be attacked. How many know what it is to be attacked and to be so despondent and to cry out, say, God, where are you? Where's the answer to prayer? You, you go through that travail. You go through that travail. And some of you women know what travail is. We men don't really, but you know what travail is. You know, you know the agony, you know the pain, and, but there's something always birth. And I am watching what new level God is birthing in my life and birthing in this house and birthing in Johnny and Briar. I so thank God for them here. Now, let's talk about those wells that God's going to unlock, and then i got to shut her down. Christian, this, is a, this is some stats I want to share with you because the gainsayers and evil people say the church is down the tube and all that kind of stuff, you know. That's not true at all. The church is shrinking. Their church might be shrinking, but our church is not shrinking. Here, Christianity is not shrinking, it says. It's shifting dramatically from the northern hemisphere to the south. It's shifting. You see what I'm saying? Evelyn found this on, on, the, on the iPad and, and copied it for me. Inspiring time today with Rick, uh, with Rick Warren. One of the latest, one of the last great global statesmen of the Western church. There's a pernicious myth out there that the church is declining, and it's, but it's actually growing. Since the year 2000, think about it, the world population has grown at 1%, but the church has grown 2%, and in some cases and areas, 100%. 
hundred percent. That's mega. The church right now is growing faster than the global population. Growing faster than the, more people are getting saved than are born. For every one person that's born, two people are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it, church. Hallelujah. Anyway, it says a whole lot more. There's 2.6 billion, billion people in the world, uh, Christians in the world. How many know that 2.6 billion believers are anointed by God sitting there doing minimal, operating in this era, but when the voice of the Lord comes and the oil and the anointing of God is unleashed in them, how many know we're going to have a Holy Ghost tsunami in the world? It's already happening in the nations. Uh, young people, you have the young generation in Amsterdam and places, have, have you seen that? Just start worshiping God in the street and then thousands join them, thousands join them. And they're just out there in the street, packing the street with thousands of people, just worshiping God. What do you think that is? That's the manifestation of the anointing of God in the believer's hearts. So now I'm done. Next service, you know me, it's gonna to be totally different. So tune in online to find out what it's going to be like. But I want you to stand right now. And I'm going to pray. I know this sounds common. And I'd like to have an altar call. Maybe in our second service we will because now we've got a time factor issue, right? How many have a need that you want the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life, in any area of your life. Let's see your hand. Let's see your hand. Let's see your hand. Okay. How many believe that God wants to manifest in your life? You don't have to feel a thing. You don't have to go, oh, did I ever feel it? You don't have to feel it. It's the truth. It's the truth. I told dying people, by the power of God, you're not going to die, you're going to live. And they did. And they got out of the hospital and were supposed to die by morning. I didn't feel anything, but I thought, hey, nobody's around. If it doesn't work, I'm not going to tell anybody. But if it works, I'm going to tell everybody. It worked. It worked. The word of the Lord works. Your feelings can come after. But the word of the Lord works. Father, in the name of Jesus, raise your hands, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your glory be manifest in our hearts, our spirits, our lives, our families, our finances, our emotions, our mind. Satan attacks and destroys. We feel condemned. We don't feel like maybe we've done this wrong or that wrong. Whatever we've done wrong is under the blood. Manifest your glory. Manifest your power. Manifest your anointing. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, manifest it as people go home, as people get in their cars, as people get a doctor's report. They will see the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in power and healing, encouragement, love, and joy. Let's give God a praise offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. Would you honor Pastor Andrew for that awesome word? So powerful. Thank you so much. And we just want to give anyone the opportunity to receive Jesus this morning. If he's not the leader of your life yet, we just want to give you an opportunity to do that. So with every head bowed and we just ask that if there's anyone in the room this morning that would like to commit their lives to Jesus, to surrender everything, to make them the leader 
of your life, this is your time. I'm just ask that you raise your hand as no one looks. This is just a moment between you and the Lord this morning. And Motion Church, you know how to help our friends this morning. Would you just pray this with me? Dear Jesus, I'm asking you today, be the king of my life. Be the Lord of my heart. I give you permission to help me, to mold me, and make me like Jesus. Help me to live every single day for the rest of my life with you at the very center. Amen. Amen. Would you just hear from everyone how excited we are that you made that commitment this morning? Glory to God. We're going to continue to worship here for a moment and we'll wrap up. Let's give him praise this morning, church. He's so faithful. Thank you for joining us. If you made the decision to give your life to Jesus, please click the link below to let us know. We would love to walk out this journey of faith with you. If you would like to give your tithes or offerings, you can do so online or in person. See you next week.